In this video, I'm showing you a complete opening repertoire that you can use with the white pieces. It was the one that I used to get to 1800 in chess, and it's quite fun and full of attack. First of all, the philosophy of this opening repertoire is for the white pieces we want to attack. And my idea was that I wanted to become a strong chess player. So I couldn't waste time memorizing moves that I would forget the day after. But at the same time, I want to feel comfortable and happy about my openings. So this is what I did. Against e4, e5, we'll get started. So I played e4 first move. And now we will see what to play against. e5, c6, e6, c5, uh, knight here, d5. So we will see the main line and the side lines. So let's start with e4, e5, because at low level, when I started playing chess, this was the most played opening. I went with the knight out. And now, if you've seen already the video about e4, e5, you know what to play against f6, d6. If not, check it out. Uh, I will assume that my opponent will play knight c6 or knight f6. So we will also see this as bonus. So after this, I, I have studied the four knights. So before developing this bishop, I loved this idea of knight c3. Because you know what? One of the most natural moves in this position, black can basically play bishop here or knight there. And one of these moves is really, really bad. Because, let's get started, if bishop c5, you can snap this pawn on e4, and white already gets a very nice advantage. Now, what is the idea of this move? You might say, what? You're leaving a piece hanging. The point is that when black is taking, you go with the center and you're doing a nice fork. Your opponent can go wrong in so many ways. For example, a move that looks so appealing in this position is bishop take f7, because you say like, okay, Black is going to lose a piece, so let's lose it in the best way. So let's take this pawn, and after king takes, let's take here. And basically we are equal material, but this king is weak. This seems like so, but it's not real. Because this king is actually quite safe. White is going to play d4, white has the you know, strong center there. You know how it's called. Um, the knight has to move and we go with the knight here. And basically what you're going to do in this position, the only thing that you have to know is that you're going to do a um, castle <laughs> without castling. So you play bishop here with high priority to those moves. You want to play bishop out, rook here and king g1. This is all you have to know. And basically one, just one little addition, you might say, okay, what is going to happen if my opponent gives a check? Well, now you have to move the king to g1. And how do you bring the rook into the action? So the entire purpose of this opening repertoire is that in every single opening, you understand how to develop all your pieces in a very harmonious way. That's the goal. So what you have to do next, the way to bring this rook to the action is by playing h3, King h2 and rook there. It seems like it needs lots of time, but actually already once you play rook f1, you're going to win a tempo on the queen. And also the queen here is misplaced because here the knight would love to go on f6. Is that now maybe the knight needs to go here, which is a little bit bad. So in this position, actually, you will be all right. Let's go back here. Uh, if your opponent is trying to go for a very quick development, well, you're not in a hurry, because, uh, sorry, you're not in trouble. Because first of all, the knight cannot go there because you're really going to play e5. And the best move for the knight is to go back home. So if your opponent wants to try to develop fast, they have to go on e7. And then guys, you keep going with the plan of rook here, castle, you go with the king there. There is not really a hurry to play this move, but who cares? You have an amazing center. You're going to play bishop g5, queen d2. You bring the other rook to the party. Uh, you, you, you're so happy about this position. But of course, not everyone. I was about to spill the water over my desk, but it didn't happen. So please like, this video has been saved. <laughs> so let's go back to this move. After knight takes, this move will be played lots of times. I swear, this will happen so many times. It has happened to me. I've won so many games. But this is also a possibility, of course. And now you play the move d4. Pinning, and you win back to peace. Now there are two moves. The most obvious move is bishop takes here, and that's a bad move, because you're going to take with the queen, this knight is hanging. If this knight moves, there is a g7 pawn that is waiting for you. A free cheese macaroni going to be captured, and the rook behind is also hanging. So this is really, really bad, because also after queen f6, you're just going to trade the queens and then play knight b5, taking this pawn. The best move is, is like king d8 here. 
that, that, that's ugly. This is not this is not the best move because you're winning a piece. You're completely winning gear. But hey, of course, who is going to play knight g6? So here, the best move is to protect the knight with the move d6. If you protect it with the queen, there is a problem. For example, what if queen e7? There is the strong knight e5. You're attacking the queen and the pawn at the same time. And this is the only move, but you're still going on with this move. The knight moves. You can take this pawn. Guys, this is so much fun. So the best move is to play d6, defending in this very natural way. And now what you have to do is to just develop your pieces. I like many times, and this is something that I loved, to go for a long castle because I want to attack. So I play like bishop here. Uh, yeah, now this is a fun move because basically with the bishop out here, you're also attacking this knight and you're threatening to win a pawn, right? If your opponent defends with queen here, we know that we go with the knight in the center. So your opponent has to do something. If they move it, th they might already go crazier and move this knight away in panic. But you know that you take the pawn here behind. So f6 is the best move to protect this piece if they find it. And if they find it, you know, you're still fine. You're going to go for a long castle. And now, once your opponent is going to develop your piece, you play f3. They go for long castle, then you play bishop e2. You, here, you, what you want to play is to play g4, h4, h5, g4. Open up the file and give checkmate. Now, if you play g4 immediately, you lose this pawn. So that's why you have to play maybe first bishop here, and then you play g4. You're ready. You're ready to just throw all your pawns, push and baby. You bring the rooks here. You're going to, at some point, to go with the bishop there, whatever. You're going to give checkmate. So going back at this point, taking gear is bad. The best move in this position is a move that nearly nobody will play. Bishop d6. Because you're protecting the knight with the bishop, you're saving the bishop. And after pawn takes, uh, bishop takes, you, um, the material is completely equal. Uh, you have been trading pieces in a very fancy way. White is still a bit better here. And let's see just how you're going to develop your pieces. So I like to push the bit to put the bishop here. One day you will play a four attacking this bishop, uh, but not in a hurry because you want to castle first. So you are going to castle to put the bishop on g5. And here you just simply keep going. You have developed all your pieces. This is the goal of this repertoire to have a very nice position. White is a bit better here. You're going maybe to play f4 and e5. This is a big threat already. Come on. If we can play this move, let's say your opponent plays a random bad move. And, okay, they have to take here. If they go here, you have a fork. So they have to take there, you take back. But now you're threatening this move. The knight has to move. You go with the queen here. You give checkmate thanks to this bishop. I mean, this is an amazing position. This is everything you have to know if your opponent plays bishop c5. Uh, if not, they will play the other move, which is knight to f6. This is the, uh, like, the real four knights. Um, and you're going to play the scotch variation of the four knights this is what i love to play and it's very fun because after pawn takes pawn takes many players will just trade everything at the beginning because they like to trade so we should consider shortly this uh this position basically here you have a queen in the center of the board and usually they say like don't move your queen out too early but yes you know that this is true just if your queen can be attacked by pieces of less value. For example, if there would be a knight here that could attack the queen, well, this queen has to move one more time. So it's not so good. Instead, in this situation, that queen there is very powerful. It's a giga queen. Look at those biceps. <laughs> and what you're going to do next is just develop your pieces. And if you want to have a very nice, simple plan to attack... You can go for long castle, so you can play bishop here, uh, long castle, and then you're going to play f3, g4, h4, h5. This is a very typical plan, you're going to attack your opponent, and hey, it's gonna be lots of fun also here. If they are a little bit more experienced, they will not take your knight on d4, but they will develop this bishop. Now there are two active squares. One is bishop c5 and one is bishop b4. Uh, bishop c5 is really not making so much of a problem because, okay, they're attacking this knight now, so you protect it. And now they have to be careful because if they castle, you're winning a piece. You just take here, you're attacking the queen, and once they take back whatever, you just take a piece and you're so much happy, extra piece you win the game. So here in this situation, they have to move this bishop another time. 
if they trade here again, you end up with a very strong queen. You have nothing to complain. You have a strong center. You're going to castle long. Maybe you play f4, e5. You can go. You can be very happy. So if they go back here, you still play queen d2, long castle, and the plan is the same. You go with f3, g4, h4. You go for the attack. The best move in this situation is not bishop c5, but it's bishop b4. Because what they are doing, they are pinning this knight and they want to take this pawn. Now, if you think about how can I protect this pawn by developing another piece, you might think about bishop d3, but that's bad. Please don't do that because you blunder a knight. So what do you have to do here? First, you give away your knight. They're going to take, usually you have to take with a pawn towards the center. And now you play bishop here to protect this pawn, develop a new piece, all good. Now, they have a weakness here, with two pawns doubled. So what do you want to do? You play the move d they play the move d5. This is very logical. Now, you want to take, because this pawn has been attacked way too many times. Remember, this knight is pinned. So you take here, they take, and you castle. And they castle. In this position, you have a very slight advantage. Uh, you can finish your development by placing your no, sorry by placing your bishop on on g5 and you're pinning this knight and now if your opponent is not careful let's say they play a random move let's say they play h6 this is a very typical move once you play you place your bishop here you're going to win a pawn because you take queen takes and you take here and then you're also giving a fork this is not such a big deal because your opponent can still protect uh the bishop, but yay, you have an extra pawn, you can play this end game and try to win the game. So after bishops g5, they might, if they know, they will play the move c6 to protect this pawn one more time. And now guys, you complete the development by going with the queen here. Attention here, there is a trap. Because if they play bishop g4, it is a big mistake. You, you win a piece. This has happened to me, and that's why I love this system. You take here, and you're counterattacking the queen. This is very is an intermezzo, so it's not very simple to to see. Now, if they take, you take, and now yes, they could take this bishop, but you are taking this one, and you have an extra piece. And if they move this bishop back, you move your bishop back, and you still have an extra piece. And if they don't go for a bishop here, and they play a normal move, you will keep going by playing a normal move. I'll show you just a little plan. Here, usually, this knight is the most uh, is the piece that is misplaced, and usually in the middle game, you should try to improve every single piece of your pieces because you have developed them all, so you gotta get the most out of them. And this knight is blocked; is not doing much here. So a very nice way is to root it through e2, g3, maybe go to f5 and start to attack a little bit as king. That's all you need to know. So let's go back to the second move. After knight of three, you also need to be ready to face the move knight of six. This is called a patch of defense. I will give you a small bonus. So first of all, you take here, right? And now you have to know this. If your opponent takes, hoy oh boy, you're going with the queen here. You're attacking this knight. If they protect it, you attack with the pawn. So now they have to move it. And once they move it, you have knight here. This is a discovery check. You're attacking the queen. They cannot cover with the queen because you take it anyway with the knight. So you're winning a queen in five moves, six moves. That's amazing. But of course here, they might not take there and they will play the move d6. So you have to move your knight back and just now they take this pawn. Here, I suggest you to go for a very simple idea. We want to attack, so we want to go for long castle. So you play knight c3. If they go back, you play d4, d5, you develop all your pieces and you're very happy. So here, usually, if they don't want to waste so much time, they want to take here. And you take back with this pawn. Remember, with the d pawn, it's important. Because you want to go long castle. So here, it's very nice because you're going to have four pawns protecting your king. Which is very good. So in the scenario, like bishop here, this short castle, queen d2 knight here and long castle you we have opposite side castling and so the plan in the middle game is to attack so here you're going to attack with h4 knight here maybe bishop there rook here g4 push them all and the difference is that actually the fact that you have a pawn here is helping you because you're having four pawns to protect your king so it's a stronger uh, king side it's harder for your opponent to, to attack 
Uh, remember just a prophylactic move, usually after bishop here, you want to protect this pawn with the move king b1, so the king is protecting all the pawns and your king side is very, very safe. Have fun in this position, I really enjoy that. So again, guys, after this, you find what to play against f6 here, you have to sacrifice the pawn and then to go with the queen here. I'll show you shortly, okay? This is the Damiano defense, it's really very bad. After f6, you take here and you win a rook, so if the king goes here, you take, the king goes there, you give a check, the king goes here, you give a check, the king goes here, now you play, you can give a check, you can play, okay, I like, let's give a check, g4, h4, you want to give checkmate. And after d5, which is attacking the queen, you play queen f7. And now you're going to give checkmate at the next move. The king cannot go anywhere. The queen on f7 is so powerful, controlling all these squares. There is nothing to avoid the checkmate next. Queen f6, made baby, with a pawn. <laughs> uh, if you want to know what to play against d6, you gotta watch the other video. Uh, I will put it somewhere. Let's move on at move one. What if your opponent is playing any other move? We will consider the two... French and Karokan together. So this is what I was playing. I wanted a very easy opening repertoire. The only thing I wanted to know is how to develop my pieces. So this is quite rare, will not happen so much. And so I just went for the for the exchange variation. Just trade in the center and now develop all my pieces. In the French, you're going to develop with the knight here. Uh, then you go with the bishop out, you go with castle, you develop this. And usually I like to play the move c3 to defend this pawn. And now if you want to know a plan to complete all the development of all the pieces, you go with knight here, rook here, knight on f1 and knight g3. And then all your pieces are active and you have a good position. What you have to know, one little detail, is that as your pawn is blocked on the light square, uh, sorry, on the dark square, this bishop is considered a bad bishop. So if you can trade this bishop for this bishop, it's a good trade. And you should try to avoid that your opponent can trade this bishop, uh, the light square bishop for your own bishop. That's all you need to know. Then play games and analyze your game. You should really be alright. There is no risk in this position for white. Just develop your pieces and you will have a good position where you have an extra tempo and so a slight advantage. Let's go to the Karakan. Here the approach is the same. This is what I was doing. I just traded in the center and developed all my pieces. Now, if you want to be like develop very smart, remember you first develop your bishops and then your knights. It's counterintuitive because usually you first go out with the knight, but you want to avoid some annoying pins. So you first move your bishop out. They move the knight and now you have to protect this pawn, right? So you play the move c3. It's very similar to the other French line. Also, you are avoid because you are also avoiding moves like knight before, annoying your bishop. You, in open position, you don't want to trade bishops for knight. So this move makes lots of sense. They develop, you develop your bishop, and now you go with the queen on b3. I like it. They're attacking, and so you're attacking this pawn and this pawn. They will play queen d7 to protect this little pony. And now you develop your knight here, and then your knight there. Bing! Boom, and you trade here. This is good. This is good for you, you know? This this is the bishop that is blocked by the pawn, so it's good to trade. And now you castle. What you have to know about this middle game. This is very typical. Let's put also the move castle. So basically the center is a little bit blocked, but the pawn structure is like an arrow. It's showing you where you have to go for your attack. So look at this. Bang! You have to go towards the king side. And your opponent. Bang! Has to go towards the queen side. So your opponent will try to slowly do moves like a5, b5, b4. But honestly, what are they attacking? A pawn structure. So this is a very advanced uh, concept. Instead, on the king side, once you play moves like rook here, uh, knight there, f4, f5, you're going to attack the king. And that's much more fun. And if your attack goes through, you give checkmate and you win the game. If their attack goes through, maybe they created a weak pawn that they can exploit later. But I think check play for playing for checkmate is more fun. Let's go back to move one. We have to see what to play against the Sicilian. So I suggest one easy plan that you can play against anything. So you play knight out, d6 and d4. And guys, again, this is a very simple opening repertoire. So please don't get upset if I'm just keep it short. 
I think simplicity is a power, it's a strength, because the less you have to remember, the more you actually can focus on improve your chess, improve your moves, because opening at the end doesn't really matter. So after pawn takes, you take with the knight, you go for the open Sicilian, and now you're going to go for a very simple plan, long castle and attack. So your opponent goes for knight out, knight out. This is the knight orf is the most played of the Sicilian. So I will focus on this one and then maybe we'll do a very complete video about all the type, all the different Sicilian. But for now, this is a very good plan to know. So you're going to play F3, Bishop here, Queen D2 and Long Castle. So this is how you're going to develop your pieces. Now let, let's put, let's, let's make that your opponent plays um, a very solid Sicilian. So you play Bishop here, they play this, Queen here, castle you go on castle and now we have opposite side castling you know the plan is to attack and you keep going in the same way g4 h4 h5 g5 let's just throw some moves in the board so let's say they play knight here to develop you play this now they also have to go for the attack you no know, and develop this bishop still so you keep going you keep going they develop you keep going i'm just putting some logical moves guys now you play g4 they have to move this knight and if they go here, you throw even g6. And this is so much fun. Because after, if they take everything, let's put it that way, they win a pawn, you're going, first of all, this pawn is hanging, so this is a total catastrophe already. But let's let's say that this pawn is not hanging, you can join with the queen and you can try to give checkmate. Now the king has still that square, but you can go with the bishop here or take this pawn. There are so many nice ideas. And this is just an example to see how you can go on with your attack of course you have to take care on the other side that your, your opponent is also trying to attack you with moves like b4 or queen h5 usually a very nice move is to play the king here to defend at the same time this pawn and to get out of the c file also sometimes you have to be careful about rook sacrifices because they might take here in order to destroy your pawn structure and of course also moves like d5 because sometimes they want to try to attack you in this in the center um to distract you to distract you from the attack so moves that you have to look for is d5 b4 queen here those are the moves that if your opponent is prepared they are going to play if they play the scandinavian you have to know really really this is what i knew i mean i would take there then i develop the knight to attack the queen and now how i develop my pieces i play d4 then i play bishop here knight there i play bishop out somewhere here there or there depends where is convenient i castle short and then i play for the center i bring my rook to the center i improve my pieces i have more space i should be better i well white is always better in the scandinavian you don't have to know much just develop your pieces and have fun in the middle game last but not least we see the alekine and honestly i didn't know anything but I want you to be ready, and then I will do a little bonus. I will show you how to play against the stuff for Gambit. Um, because I think I didn't do it. Yes. So, Alakine, you push the pawn in the center, attack this knight one more time. The knight goes there. You attack the knight one more time. The knight has to move, and you go for the center. Now, guys, you have an amazing center. center. And if your opponent plays some weird ways to develop, like e6 or g6, you just keep going with your development. Knight out. Bishop here knight out bishop here you castle you're amazing here you don't go for long castle because the king would be a little bit too weak so you go for short castle here and the best move for black is to play the move d6 so they are attacking the center now what i play right now is a very solid approach so i i take there but then i didn't know anything but the move i want to start to play now is the move f4 because it's very fun and gives you the possibility to attack you have a very extended center and the only thing you have to be careful is not to lose pawns because after for example pawn takes pawn takes this is what black usually plays knight here now if you play knight f3 you might be in a little bit of trouble after this pin that is a little bit annoying right because now they are threatening to take here and then to take this pawn so what you have to know here is to first go with the bishop so that there is not this pin you first develop this way and usually now what they play bishop f5 you develop your knights 
and you develop the other knights, you develop all your pieces, and basically now, if they simply castle, you just have so much more space, guys. One day you are going to play the move d5, you are going to castle, and the only way that they can try to fight for the center, center is to play the move f6, but here you can just castle and ignore it, because if they take it, you have an incredible move. You play the move d5. This knight will have to move at some point, and you're going to take here next. Your rook is so powerful. You're going to threat a check here on h4, on h5, sorry. It's just so good. And if they castle instead of taking, now you can take it after bishop takes. This pawn is weak. You have a strong center. You're just going to improve all your pieces, move the queen up so that the rooks can join the party in the center of the board. You have an amazing position. You are better. Enjoy. Final bonus. If they play the stuff for Gambit, this is something that honestly didn't exist uh, when, I, when I had this opening repertoire. But hey, it's a very simple idea, so let me show you. So this is the stuff for Gambit. It's an opening invented by Eric Rosen. You're going to take it. You have an extra pawn. But things can go really, really bad if you're not prepared. For example, um, yeah, if you defend this pawn that is now under attack, this can go out. And already, if you play a normal development move, um, here there is knight g4. And there is no way to protect this pawn, because if you're going to castle here, there is queen h4, and you're about to be checkmated. After h3, the knight can take here, and you are in big, 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 big trouble. So let's shortly, let's shortly see how to play against this opening, because if you play just logical moves, you are lost. <laughs> so here I suggest you to go for the center, so to push the pawn. Instead of defending, you push the pawn, and you're attacking this knight. Now, if they go here, you go for the center, and you are basically better, you have an extra pawn. Here, a strong engine says plus one. Why is plus one? Uh, because you have an extra pawn, and black doesn't have much compensation. If the knight goes here, here it's a little bit tricky. If you play the move d3 to attack this knight, they have a very strong move, but that is bishop c5. They don't move the knight, because here, if you dare to take, you are losing a lot of material. Bishop takes c2. If you take here, the queen is taking your queen. And if you go here, there is bishop g4, which is forcing you to take this bishop, and you lose the queen. So after knight here, please do not play the move d3, but go for the center with the move d4. You're protecting this pawn, you're avoiding bishop c5, and you're, you have a, an amazing position. They can go for the final trick of queen h4, and you're... You don't play um you don't play the move g3. I don't remember Ah yeah, of course g3 is another mistake because after knight takes, pawn takes, there is queen here. And you're winning the rook. So this is the final trick. And here what you have to remember, you go with the queen here, and then you're going to develop all your pieces. Bishop here, knight here, sometimes also this move. You develop this bishop here. Or, or maybe also on e3. There are so many possibilities. Just leave all of your pieces. You have an extra pawn. And there is absolutely no compensation. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was simple. But the plan is always to attack in every situation. I might do more specific videos for every opening. So you can discover more about this. Hope you like this. Please like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments which next videos, which opening would you like to learn. I'm really curious to hear. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.